Hello there everybody and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about Ravenstein's 11 laws on migration. This video is going to go over everything you need to know about these laws and why they occur in the world that we live in. Now the important thing about Ravenstein and his 11 laws is not memorizing the order of the laws or even memorizing every single one of the laws. It's understanding why these laws exist in our world today and how even these laws might be shifting as our society has changed over time. While watching the video, make sure to use notes. You could take notes on your own or feel free to use my guided notes, which you can find in the description below. One more thing before we start, this video is talking about the 11 laws and they're not in any particular order. So it's not like the first law we talk about is any more important than the last one. Now let's get into the first law of Ravenstein's 11 laws on migration. Our first law is most migrants are going to actually travel short distances through step migration. Over time, they'll achieve long distance goals. However, it will take a while. Most migrants are going to travel from city to city. They'll go short distances at a time and in the long run, be able to achieve a longer goal. So step migration is key and that is the majority of ways that most people are going to be traveling. Our next law builds off the previous law. If migrants are gonna be traveling long distances, then they're going to go to large urban areas. If you remember the gravity model, or if you haven't gone into it yet, feel free to check out my video. You can click the card on the top right. The gravity model talks about areas that are larger have bigger pull factors. Remember even from our push and pull factors video where we went into why people migrate. We can see through Ravenstein's laws that this still holds true. People are going to tend to go to larger areas. There's more opportunity for them. So in the step migration process, that first law, we might be traveling short distance. However, in the long run, if we're going longer distances, we're going to be seeing migrants go to large urban areas. Continuing off our theme of moving to urban areas, Ravenstein's next law looks at actually the relationship between rural lifestyle and urban lifestyle. Here he states that actually if you are in a rural community, you're more likely to move to an urban area. This even connects into Zelinsky's model and that's stage two where we're starting to see people shift from living in maybe the farms or these outskirt communities and start to go into the urban areas or the big city where there's more again economic opportunity for people who are living there. The next law of Ravenstein's has kind of shifted a little bit, particularly when we're looking at areas where we have large refugees and asylum seekers. Here though, Ravenstein notes that families are less likely to migrate across international borders. There's more risk. Now that started to shift a little bit due to some economic and political pressure that has come from certain countries. We could look at the US and Mexico border as a perfect example. However, overall though still, families are less likely due to the risks of crossing an international border. It's just more dangerous, so it's more difficult for families to achieve. So they're less likely to pursue that migration. The next law for Ravenstein is not as straightforward as the others. This law is that for every migration flow we have, for every migration stream, this flow of people, there is a counter stream that is created. What this means is when someone moves from place A to place D, they now are interacting. They've connected the two. And we also start to see that movement from D back to A. So there's going to be a counter stream. If someone's coming from a certain area and moving to a new place, well then there's going to be things going from their place that they just migrated to back to their home. Whether it's ideas, whether it's goods and services, money, or even more people. Now, Ravenstein does state though, the streams don't have to have the same volume. Just because one person came from one location to another doesn't necessarily mean the exact same thing's gonna happen in reverse. All he's saying is there's now a connection between these places. They're gonna interact more and we will see some things go back, whether it be the form of money or goods or even more people. That could also happen. The next law actually looks at gender a little bit. Now here, Ravenstein noticed that females are more likely to migrate within the country's borders. They're more likely to migrate around. However, when it came to crossing these longer distances, then men were more likely to migrate. 
So females were more likely to migrate within their own country and a shorter distance, and males are more likely to migrate long term. They're longer distances that they will travel. The next law starts to look again at these urban areas, these large cities or large towns. Ravenstein noticed that these areas, these urban centers, these towns, anywhere that has a really big population, they are going to actually start to grow more through migration and less through natural births. As we know, as we've studied the demographic transition model, Model and other population trends, as we have urban areas, it becomes more expensive to have kids. So people start having less kids. So these areas then start to grow through migration. So immigration is actually really important for these areas to continue to see growth. Otherwise, we start to see a population decrease. The next law could be possibly a somewhat controversial one, but Ravenstein noted that migration improves economic development. When we have more migration happening, we're going to have more economic opportunities, more innovation, more economic growth. And that then helps both societies. So migration actually boosts the economy and it can make things better off for everyone. Now, some people do disagree with this one, and let me know in the comments below what you think on this law. But Ravenstein noted from his observations that migration does have positive impacts when it comes to the economy. Continuing off our theme of economic growth, well, Ravenstein noticed too that the number one driver for migration is economics. We talked about this too in our push and pull factor video, where we looked at why people do migrate. Economics is huge, so Ravenstein notices that, hey, this is the number one reason. If you want an area to see less migrants coming out of, well, look at its economy and see if you can improve it. If people have jobs and have a stable living, well, they're less likely to migrate. And when we see people struggle, then they're more likely to go to a different area and migration will increase. Ravenstein's next law looks at agricultural development. And what we notice here is actually a similar theme to some of his previous laws. What Ravenstein noticed is people are more likely to move from an agricultural lifestyle into an urban area. We're going to see more people shifting to the cities and less people living on farms. And that's going to be a big theme. And again, it connects actually back to economics and opportunities that the city offers. Ravenstein's last law was that as technology, communication, and transportation improve, so will migration. And what I mean by improving migration, I mean it's going to increase in volume. We can see that today. People are starting to move a lot more. Barriers have started to be torn down. What used to be these physical barriers that prevent people from getting to a location, B, C, D, whatever it may be, no longer are as big of an obstacle due to our advancements in technology or even the ability we have now to share information. Now what we're actually starting to see though is migration be hindered through government policies. So it's less physical and now it's actually more political boundaries that are starting to reduce and also kind of hinder migration. And that is Ravenstein's 11 laws on migration. Hopefully this video kind of helped you understand some of the basics of it. The important thing here is to understand these themes. We're seeing people move to larger cities. We're seeing people move into urban areas instead of living in the rural communities. We're also seeing economics is a major driver and when we have more migration, we'll start to see populations increase and more economic growth. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Ravenstein's laws. Are some of them outdated? Do they still work? Or do you disagree with some of them? Hopefully this video helped you out. If you did find value in the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you again for watching this video. And until next time, I'll see you online.